All right, so uh, section two, rate laws and introduction. Now, we, we talked about the rate in the last one, and I kept on throwing out rate laws there. We're, we're building up to, in this one, we're actually going to show you the form of the rate law. Last time, we were just talking about the rate of a reaction, okay, how, uh, how quickly the NO2 uh, fell apart or was put back together. Um, so that's 12.1 if you need to uh, rewatch that. Um, in this one, we... Uh, have to take it, we, we need to consider a few things when we're talking about rates. Number one, we looked at this last year. We said, had a little voice squeak there, that this was our reaction. And that's great and that's awesome, but what if this also happens? What if after enough of this is built up, we start recombining these things to reform the nitrogen dioxide? That is going to change the rate of the reaction because that's going to build more nitrogen dioxide up, which will then be able to decompose, and so you're going to have a change um, there. To avoid this, we are just going to focus on this right when we start, when there isn't enough of this stuff to go backwards yet. Okay. We will get into that situation where we have to look at equilibrium as well, that forward and backward motion. Um, but for right now, we're not going to worry about that. Okay, um, So we're going to set up our rate law, and it's going to take this form. K is a constant, depending on the reaction. We're not going to play with that too much right now. We will come back to it later. Right now, it'll either be given, or we're just going to leave it as a variable. Then we're going to have our concentration of whatever we're looking at, in this case, the NO2. Uh, the other two don't play into it because we're, n we're not going to have them uh, around yet. We're going to start where there's none of those around. And then this is going to be the order of the reaction. This is going to tell us how fast or how slow the reaction is going to go. Okay, um, And this is what we're focusing on um, for this week, this N. How do we determine what that N, what does that N do for us? Okay. All right, so rehashing the technical terms here. This is my constant, uh, the rate constant, and it's different for everything. Uh, you can calculate it, you can do it. Everything that we do here is experimentally done. You, you cannot just pull numbers out of a hat. You have to have experiments or information from experiments to do these. Um, this is the concentration of whatever I'm looking at, in this case the NO2. And this is known as my order, okay, the order of the, of the reaction. Okay, it can be zero, it can be one, it can be two, it can be half. Um, and we're going to look at those today. Um, all right, we can write this in a couple different ways. We can look at it from the viewpoint of our uh, reactant. We can look at it from a viewpoint of our products. Um, if we wanted to say that I was going to look at my rate, and this little dash thing is a prime, okay, that's what it's called, and it means that I'm not looking, I'm looking at a secondary rate that is going to tie back into my first rate. So this is my first constant. Um, and it's directly tied to this. This is my second constant, and it's tied to if I'm looking at the rate for O2. Okay, so it's not going to be the same rate. It's not going to be the same uh, any, uh, because it, we looked before. The O has uh, no coefficient. It's 1, and so K is actually going to uh, equal 2. Uh, K prime, right? Because we've got to double that to make the two rates the same. Um, so we can look at it from a couple of different angles, um, but again, we're not worried about the K too much. We're gonna we're focusing on this N here. But just so that you know, if we throw that in there, if you see those primes, that's what it's taught. We're looking at it from a different perspective. It's different than the first K, um, and you can even go K prime prime, or you know as many as you need to. Um, so keep that in mind when we're doing it. Uh, just kind of a segue there, but let's go back to what we were talking about here. Um, 
All right, so again, for those of you who do math, uh, this is going to make a lot of sense. Uh, calculus, I guess. Uh, this is going to make a lot of sense for those of you who aren't. Um, it's going to be kind of a little bit fuzzy, just vocabulary words, memorize them there. But we have two different types of rate law. We can look at the differential rate law, which is what we've been looking at. Okay, uh, as you minimize it down to a single instantaneous point, um, what is the change in the concentration? Um, and this is often just called the rate law because it's the one that's most often looked at. We can also look at the integrated uh, rate law, which is over time... Um, how does the change in concentration or the concentration in time? So we're going to look at a section of it. Um, instead of an instantaneous point um, and look at this area under the curve um, instead. If you get one, you know the other. They are directly tied together. Differentials and integrated, uh, and uh, integrals are like uh, multiplication and division. If you do one, you can do the opposite function re reverses it, right? So two times two is four. Four divided by two is two again. Same thing here. If we know the differential rate law, we know the integrated rate law. And you can use either one uh, to uh, find, depending on which one is easier to calculate. Okay, so that's 12.2.